here are all the notes I took to share with you guys in this video so you can pass the driving course test here in Korea. Because if you think you're just going to waltz in there and pass one of the hardest, if not the hardest driving tests in the world, just because you have 20 years of driving experience like me, you're going to find out the hard way. Alright guys, I'm heading for my second attempt. Just be mindful that at the earlier times, the traffic is going to be horrible. But yeah, I gave myself plenty of cushion time because I wanted to go earlier to observe the driving course while the other people are doing it. Better yet, it's probably better to watch a plethora of videos available for you to pass the technical course test as it's not cheating. It is actually expected here in Korea that you do so beforehand. But the problem is a lot of the information out there is going to be in Korean. And a lot of the English forums that I was going through either had misinformation or incomplete information. So that is why a lot of foreigners, unfortunately, are failing this test or just giving up. Luckily for you, I can speak Korean. So I have translated and compiled all the information that Koreans are getting that you don't have privy to. And just like my first video on the written test, I will put links to all the great videos I found on YouTube that will help you pass this test. Some of them are in Korean, some of them will be with subtitles, but they will all make sense once you watch this video. Directly from the Driver's License Testing Association, I highly recommend that you watch that. They will actually show this exact same video for you once you get to the testing facility. That is the only instruction you will have available for you in English, and it's only in subtitles. However, the more course-specific tutorials and the Q&A section will only be available for you in Korean because the instructors just don't speak English. I tried, but they're not going to explain it to you in English. You're just expected to know. That's why I'm going to break all of this down for you. Now, this map is actually directly from the Northwestern Testing Facility, which if you watch part one of my driver's license testing guide, you will know how to get to. Very convenient, located very close to Hongdae area. But this course itself is pretty much identical in all the testing facilities. They have set it up with the exact same criterias. I've seen some of them switch this around to there, but generally it's the same concept. So this will be applicable for you no matter which area you're taking the course exam. Before I go into the technicals, I want to go over the instant fail criterias. If you're just getting a standard class 2 driver's license like me, you will have to score above 80 points. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to have to get 80 out of 100 questions, right? There are a plethora of ways that you can get points deducted. So what they should really say is you shouldn't get more than 20 points off and you'll see that each of these things that you get off at the very lowest is five and most of them will be 10 sometimes as high as 15 points so you can only make one or two mistakes throughout this course otherwise you can expect to fail it however these instant fail criterias are not tied to the point system you will just fail as soon as you make any of these mistakes so it's imperative that you definitely put on your seatbelt. That's obvious, but just, just do it. The first thing you should do is put on your seatbelt as soon as you get into the car. The moment you turn on the engine, anything, you will fail if you don't have your seatbelt on. Now, the next thing you have to be concerned about is getting into an accident or ignoring instructions. You're obviously an experienced driver, so you're probably not going to get into an accident. But an accident simply counts as you just hitting the side of a curb. So be very mindful of that. And ignoring instructions that's easier said than done because they'll most likely be communicating to you in Korean. So I'll, I'll tell you the areas where they'll probably instruct you. Um, the third thing, if you're not able to proceed with the test, you will instantly fail. Basically, this comes down to three tries to turn on the engine. I mean, this for an experienced driver should be easy. Just make sure you're stepping on the brakes. Uh, you might be nervous and forget that. Um, if you don't leave the start line within 30 seconds. Um, this actually made me rush through things, but I recommend that you just take your time because 30 seconds is a long time. Um, if you leave with your parking brake on, you know, there's so many things you'll realize that you have to remember while you go through this test. <laughs> I, I want to warn you, you know, 
of the very basic things because it's possible for you to make these mistakes. What you have to realize is all of this is done with a computer and a GPS system, so it is ruthless. The moment you slightly touch on the accelerator, but you have the e-brake on, instant fail. So you have to be very, very mindful of these things. Plan everything in your head before you get to the course. Otherwise, there's a good chance you'll fail. I mean, the pass rate for this test was 20%. So there is actually no shame in failing, but I hope you don't repeat the same mistake I did and have to do it twice because every time you fail a test, you have to pay for it again. So that's like another $20 out of your pockets that you shouldn't have to if you come better prepared. Now these other instant fails are tied in with the different testing zones. So I'll go over them when I get to the tutorial about each of the sections as I explain in order. Now for the total course, you have a little over nine minutes to complete it. That's going to be pretty much the same for any of the testing facilities because it's all the tests are pretty much identically set up with the course. You get a minus three point deduction for every five seconds over it. So <laughs> considering how much margin of error you have, you do not want to be exceeding it. But Again, I want to implore you, take everything slowly because I took everything slowly and I had plenty of time. Rushing it is probably the worst thing you could do. Um, you also have a 20 kilometer speed limit. You get a minus three point deduction for every three seconds you're over it. Um, again, take your time because I drove 10 to 15 kilometers through most of the course and I had plenty of time left. So I almost want to say ignore this, although this is something you should know because you have plenty of time. Now, the first part of the test is supposed to be easy. It's just a simple equipment check. So I, I absolutely did not study this at all and I ended up failing it embarrassingly. So that's why I wanna go over it in more detail because some of the things that are on the forums, even after the updated 2017 tests, there's been further updates to the test since that time. You'll notice some of them saying that there's only subtitles available for the GPS. When I took it as of this year, 2020, they were speaking in English. So that was not an issue. Although it created other issues that I wasn't aware of because I was relying on the voices. They will basically test you on two of the four different sections, either on turn signals, gear changing, on the headlights and the high beams, as well as operating the windshield wipers. I'll go over this in more detail, but basically everything is gonna be spoken to you on the GPS unit in front of the car. It seems simple enough, but the problem is, is that because it's a GPS and a computerized unit, it is ruthless again with the mistakes. Any false move or move of an equipment that they didn't talk about, is gonna result in a negative five point deduction. And knowing that you only have 20 points, you do not want to get a negative five point deduction, much more like a negative 15 point deduction from the very get-go like I did because everything just snowballed into mistakes uh, as you get nervous. But just watch what I have to say and you'll go in there better prepared. The second time I went through it, it was a breeze. They are going to talk to you in English and tell you different instructions. The first thing they will tell you to do is with the emergency brake or the parking brake, whatever you call it on, you're gonna do this test. Most likely the parking brake or the e-brake will be on the on position when you get into the car, but just confirm it's on or don't let it throw you off because you're nervous and, and release the parking brake. Keep the parking brake on. And the, fir the first thing they will say after that to start the test is within five seconds, turn on the engine. Now this is where you could instantly fail if you don't know how to do it, but you should. I mean, if you don't, you, sh you should be getting a driver's license in Korea. Um, so just turn on the engine. And, and, and this is where it gets tricky. Um, they will say, you know, you have to pass two of these, um, like the different criterias. And then they will say, we will do uh, the turn signal check or the light check or something like this. 
but they will first introduce the category and take a pause and then give you the actual instructions. It gets confusing because you might turn on the lights because they say we're going to do the light check. But what they are just saying is they're introducing the category. The way you can confirm that you actually need to do something, and it's something I actually picked up from the Korean tutorials on YouTube. Now, although it is in Korean, I still recommend that you follow my link to the two that I recommended that you confirm with before going to the test, because after you hear me introduce this in English, it will make sense what they're doing even though you don't understand what they're saying because their actions are, are pretty clear. But you see, there's this GPS unit right there. Even though they are speaking to you in English, I recommend that you keep an eye on that GPS unit. The moment they say something like, within five seconds, turn on the headlights, then you will see a countdown starting on the GPS unit. The reason why you want to confirm that is if you even turn on the headlights one second before that confirmation happens, before she finishes saying it, and sometimes she'll say it and it'll still take a second or two for it to start counting down, then it will not register as an action and you will fail it. So even for the Koreans, they will recommend that you look at the counter and wait for it to count up to two seconds. Now, I think that's a little bit too much on the safe side because I myself, I just waited until it went to one. But you will hear them say something like, turn on the headlights, look at the GPS, make sure the counter is at at least one second before you proceed with the action. Because at the minimum, you have five seconds to do each action, and that's plenty of time for you to do any of the actions they're requesting you to do. Here are some things that you need to watch out for. I mean, I know you know how to do the turn signals and such, but hear me out. When they tell you we're going to do the turn signals, they will say something like, turn the turn signal you know, to the right or to the left, and within five seconds. You wait for the counter, and then you turn it uh, to the right or the left. Because we're experienced drivers, we might have a tendency to shut it off without them telling you to do so because it's just like sitting there and beeping because it takes her like several seconds for her to tell you to turn it off. And you might think, oh, am I supposed to turn it off for me to proceed to the next one? Don't do that. Everything you do in the equipment check only do when they tell you to do it including turning off turn signals, etc. Because if you do anything, such as turning it off, when they don't, it will register as a five-point point deduction. So just be mindful of that. Um, as far as the gears, this one's tricky because this one, they tell you to do two things within 10 seconds. So they will say, put it into um, like drive and then put it back into park within 10 seconds. Now... This might seem simple enough, but the changing of the gear has to register in the system. What actually threw me off and made me nervous through the whole thing because I didn't know it was a thing were these beeps that were happening. You'll constantly hear these beeps. And if you know when they're supposed to come off, they will serve as a friend. But if not, it will make you nervous. Like, did I make a mistake? But <laughs> this is where you'll first be acquainted with a beep they will tell you to put it into drive. So when you put it into drive, when they confirm that that action has been done, it will beep. Whenever some kind of action has been confirmed, you'll hear a beep, not just with this, but in other areas. So put it into drive, confirm the beep, and then put it back into park so that you make sure it's registered. If, if you do it too fast, because you know, 10 seconds, you you're feeling rushed because there's a time limit, you're going to get a five point deduction. Now, the lights. This is where I snowballed into mistakes and failed in the first one. The thing that threw me off, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but in America, we generally call the, the high beams, high beams. I don't know what else you call those, 
but here in the GPS, they will say something like upper lights or upward lights. Don't let that throw you off. So this is also when I am going to encourage you to actually get into a Korean car and familiarize yourself with these different equipments because it may be different from your home country. I mean, if you're coming from the States like me, it's more or the less the same. But if you're coming from England or something, you will find out the hard way that the turn signals and everything is it's switched. So you might make a mistake. But particularly with the light check, you want to make sure you confirm the tolerances. The reason for that is, is once you turn on the lights, they will say something like, now within five seconds, turn on the upper lights. And that usually requires you pulling in the light. But a slight adjustment lower is going to end up turning on the turn signal and vice versa. So that's why you want to make sure you go into a Korean car and you check the tolerances because this is an area that even Koreans significantly get a lot of point deductions based on uh, what I'm hearing is that they actually turn on the turn signal. It's really easy for things to spiral out of control here because what ended up happening for me is <clears throat> when they say turn on the upper lights, I was like, what the heck? I was just completely thrown off and nervous and I only had five seconds to do something. And... Um, I exceeded the five seconds and then it dawned on me. I'm like, oh, upper lights must mean high beams because it's high up. Okay, duh. So then I turned on the high beams and it thought I was making an answer for the next question, which they didn't even announce, by the way. They, it was like, you know, they didn't even announce it. Like they didn't say turn on the turn signals or anything. There was just like a silent break after the five seconds and I turned it on and then they said, you made a wrong choice. And then everything just spiraled out of control from there. They said something like, turn on the turn signal, and then I, I turned the, the headlights off, and then <laughs> that's another five point deduction. <laughs> so <laughs> go in there prepared. Don't do what I did and fail on the equipment check even before you get started. Now, the only thing you have to be mindful of the wipers is don't let the speed throw you off. You all know there are adjustments for the speed lever for the wiper. It can go into like really fast, slow. It might not dawn on you until <laughs> you start doing the test and you're like, oh shoot, am I supposed to have it on fast or slow? Just the way I did it was I went into just the first level, you know, just no need to go into uh, the really high speeds. Although I don't think that's going to fail you, but uh, don't let it throw you off and make you nervous. Just go on to the first level and then when they tell you to turn it off, turn it off. Again, failure to do any of these will result in a five point deductions and they could literally add up because there's actually, although there's only two categories, within the categories there are additional instructions. So you can get, you know, 10 point deducted off of gears, like 10 point deducted off of turn signals. So just be mindful of it and go in there prepared. And when you watch the videos that I'm recommending, it will sort of give you an idea of exactly how it's going to operate. So you're not going to get startled or be too nervous when you get into the car. Now, the next thing that you have to be mindful of when you're starting the course is the turn signals. <sighs> because this is all done with a computerized system, you do not want to be touching any piece of equipment that you're not supposed to. So you don't want to be doing turn signals like here and here, even though theoretically in real life, you would be turning on the turn signal here. Um, the only three places you will be turning on the turn signal is right here at the start. And the second time you pass the intersection and you make a left turn. And when you are finishing and stopping. So when you start this is where you can get an additional five point deduction even though you'll be proceeding straight you still want to turn on your left turn signal you have to turn that on before you cross the line otherwise it's a five point deduction you also get a five point deduction if you keep it on for too long and the way that you can confirm that that turn signal has been confirmed and you haven't gotten a point deduction is after you turn on the turn signal and you pass the line you will hear that friendly beep when you hear that beep that's when you want to turn it off now after leaving the start line the first zone you'll come across is the hill zone it, it basically looks like this it's a hill with 
two lines. And the objective is to get into the middle of this line and stop for at least three seconds before you proceed over it. Sounds simple enough, but it actually has some of the most instant fails linked to it. So just be careful that once you stop, you leave within 30 seconds. I, I honestly don't even want to warn you about that because unless you're a complete idiot, I don't know how you wouldn't leave in 30 seconds. Um, you also definitely want to stop. Uh, if you don't stop at all and just cruise through it, that's an instant fail. It's also an instant fail if you fall back more than one meter. Now, this is more for manual um, cars. It's going to be really hard for you to fall back more than a meter. But just be mindful that when you are going to head up the hill, you press that accelerator firmly. Now, that ties me down into the next advice I have, though, that you could get point deductions for. I mean, you definitely want to press on the accelerator because you don't want an instant fail. But you can get a point deduction if you exceed the speed limit on the downhill, which is quite possible because the speed limit is only 20 kilometers. So as soon as you pass over this area, be ready to step on the brakes so that you don't exceed the 20 kilometer speed limit on the downhill because you will if you, if you don't. Um, also, you want to make sure you stop after you you are in the middle zone now it's very hard for you to not do that because the lane is quite wide it's actually designed for even trucks to fit in there because for the class one license you need to be doing a manual truck but if you want to be on the safe side the way you can confirm that you have passed it is by checking the rear mirrors and confirming that you're tires have passed it i mean just to be on the safe side i confirmed it passed about one meter and this is where i want to give you a little pro tip when you get into the car before starting anything you're going to be adjusting the mirrors and the seats now for you know regular driving you would adjust the rear view mirror so you can see the back side of you and check your blind spots etc but don't do that for this course it is imperative that you adjust the mirrors so they're angled in a way you can see your rear tires. It's not just for this hill course, but you'll see later on why that is critical. Adjust the rear view mirrors on the left and the right hand side so that you can see your rear tires. And that's completely possible. Um, if you're just iffy about someone hitting you from the back, although they won't because they give you plenty of space and the people are driving so slowly, just use the center rear view mirror for that the side rear view mirrors dedicated to the rear wheels now once you stop for three seconds and this is where i had to ask an obvious question do not do the e-brake later on you will need to do the e-brake but here you will just press on the regular brakes no e-brakes you will hear a beep after three seconds when you hear that beep that's when you know it's safe for you to proceed and then comes the first turn and then the second turn. Now, <laughs> it's it's the most obvious thing to do. Um, just don't cross these lines. Because the moment you hit the lines here or here, that's a negative 15 point deduction. It's the biggest point deduction you can get. Um, so something you have to be mindful of. You probably wouldn't have driven this car... I mean, I, I would be caught dead driving this kind of car anyways. <laughs> Most people wouldn't have been driving whatever crap cars they're giving you here. So, obviously, you're not going to be familiar with the turn radius. Once you drive a car, you become very aware of all the turn radiuses, um, the hit points, etc. But this is going to be a car you're not familiar with. So, the first two turns, it's where you can confirm the turn radius. And it's going to be critical that you do that. Um... So as I was turning, be mindful that this is a front wheel drive car. So even if you clear the lines with your front wheels, it is still technically possible that you can hit the lines with your rear wheels. So, you know, you'll realize the lanes are actually quite small. It's nothing like in America where the lanes are super wide. The roads are designed wide. They made it very small to imitate like a real Korean 
typical like situation you'll come across because there's these small sideways and alleyways um so you have tight tolerances but still leave enough room on the left hand side when you make that left hand turn and on the first two turns i recommend that you look at the rear view mirror and see how much clearance your rear tires are making this is gonna become critical as you familiarize yourself with the turn radius when it gets to the, the notorious T parking intersection area where everybody fails. This is your chance to, on a relatively easy turn, to confirm the turn radius of your car. I said this too many times, but just, just confirm it, okay? Now, after the first two turns, you're gonna come across what seems like a relatively easy task. Just a regular four-way intersection and you have to go through it straight. No turn signals, nothing. Um, basically just go when it's green, stop when it's red. But this is harder than it seems as I was pointed out in the tutorials. Because the opposite end is like a critical testing point to do the turn signal and the turn, they've designed this stoplight where in that particular intersection, you are only given a very short like opportunity and a green light to go through the intersection and this puts you into some tricky situations and that is why actually a lot of the tutorials i've seen tell you to actually just make a complete stop here even though it's green because you want to make sure it turns red and then you have the full like however many seconds of the green to actually proceed through the intersection because one thing that happened uh that the test instructor uh, told us about to be wary of is there was a situation that happened prior to my class where somebody instantly failed on this and the reason for that is is when he was going through it quickly changed to orange so he made a stop now he made a stop after having his car the front bumper of his car pass this line and he was sitting there to wait for it to go to green. Now, technically, because it's orange, he was clear to proceed. But because he stopped and didn't pass through the intersection within 30 seconds. Now you see why this is trickier than it seems. And obviously, if it's red and your front bumper passes the intersection, then you also get an instant fail. So this is why, to be on the safe side, the instructors were saying, you know, just stop here regardless so that you get the full green light and you can just pass through here easily. What I did, though, just because I was iffy about that advice, although I think it's completely fine because there's nothing that says you will fail because you stop for too long, you know, other than at the intersection. Um... I would just drive up slowly here. And there's actually a viewing area here before you go take the test, at least in the Northwestern facility. You will have a look at the stoplight. Just sort of look at the stoplight and see how much time you have for the light changes to happen. And you have a better idea of how slowly you should approach this and how much time you actually have to pass through here before it turns orange. Because you'll... I mean, although it sounds stupid, but I could completely empathize with that guy. It turned orange, so he didn't want to get an automatic fail for passing over this. Uh, so he stopped, but, <laughs> but then it was already considered a pass because his front bumper already passed and it was orange. He was good. And then he got an instant fail for 30 second violation. Now, even with a 20 second violation, you get a point deduction. It's not an instant fail, but if you stop at an intersection for 20 seconds, it's also uh, at least a point violation and it's a huge hit. But anyways, if you're an experienced driver, I don't think you'll have too much of a problem if you're aware of this issue. Just time everything right, proceed through. Now, after you proceed through this area, at least in the Northwestern facility, they will tell you in Korean that there's going to be somebody here. <clears throat> I don't know if they can tell you in English, but there's usually somebody here, like an uh, instructor. And then with his finger, he will tell you one, two, three, or four. But sometimes he's busy and he's not there. Now, what he's telling you to do is he's telling you to go to one of these T zones. So if he has one finger, that would be one, two, three, four. 
if you don't see anybody there, you can go to any one of these. Now, the reason why you want to be on the lookout for him is, again, there is an instant fail tied to that. If you ignore instructions from instructors, instant fail. That is why you want to be mindful of this person right here, right? And uh, if he points somewhere, just go there right i know i'm being like super detailed about this but I, I honestly think the more you know the higher chance you have to pass this because there's so many pitfalls to this course <laughs> it might be a lot of information guys but you know this is why I, I recommend that you take your time look at the videos and just familiarize and visualize how you're going to do this before you go there and that's the only way you'll pass Anyways, after this, you will arrive at the Notorious T intersection. This is where a majority of people fail this test. There is actually a more in-depth, detailed YouTube video guide on exactly how to pass this. I will tell you the pointer he points out, along with a lot of other pointers that I've seen in other videos, to pass this. It's a lot more difficult than you think because this particular T parking section it's actually a lot narrower than you can th you think it will be. So my concept of doing this perpendicular parking was completely off. And I'm really glad I saw the YouTube video prior to it. So the first thing you have to be aware of is when you come up to this T intersection, it's all going to be set up this way. One, two, three, or four. You will be going in and backing up over to your left hand side, the left hand right so it's not going to be like here it's so just be aware this is all going to be applicable to all the t's uh when you come up here uh, in real life honestly it's okay for you to just slightly go here over the center line and then like this that's what i would do just to make sure i clear the corner so even as an experienced driver it, it was something for me to consider how i can make uh, an exact turn because the moment you cross this again that's 15 point deduction you only have 20 so a 15 point deduction is huge and, and you'll see that there is lines here too if you hit that line that's also a 15 point deduction so there are actually many tutorials uh that will show you exactly how to clear that um but the way that they pointed out in the video and it was very helpful is when you are making these tight turns there's two different um advices one of them was if you look there is going to be the door handle the front edge of the door handle should be lined up with the line to turn around the corner again this is the line and this is the curb. If you hit the curb, it will count as an accident. It's an instant fail. There is another line there. So when your front door handle lines up with that, stop. Turn the handle to the right until it locks fully. And then proceed in. That's the only way you'll be able to make a complete turn and not hit it. If you just sort of do what we do in America and just sort of eyeball it, is not necessarily going to work because it's such a tight turn. Be aware of that. Um, somebody else uh, on YouTube also said, instead of the front edge touching the line, you can have your shoulder line up with the curb here. So that's, I mean, one person said line up with the curve and one person said there's like, it's a center divider and there's like a little flower pot there. I'm not sure if there was one in the Northwestern facility when that lines up with your shoulder now it's it's all iffy if you're an experienced driver you have a rough idea what it is but that's just a that's just a guide i'm not going to guarantee that you're not going to hit the curb and that's the reason why i said make sure on the first two turns you confirm the turn radius of your rear tires because that's most likely what's going to hit the corner because as an experienced driver you're at least going to clear your front tires so when you're making this turn as soon as you clear your front tires look at the rear view mirror and make sure you're clearing the rear tires if you don't take your time and do a three-point adjustment whatever you need to you do not want to cross that line because it's a 15 point violation now as soon as you clear it you have a two minute 
uh, time limit. And that's why people might be rushing to make a turn because they think the moment they go in, that's a two minute time limit. Again, there is a friendly beep. I mean, I didn't hear the beep until I was like almost here. So when you're turning in, if you're having difficulties, take your time. You have a complete total nine minutes, more than enough time. So as you turn in, you will hear the beep. Now, from this moment, you have two minutes. Unlike the minus three points for every five seconds over the total of nine minutes, this one just ends up being a 10 point deduction for just going over two minutes. This one, you do need to speed through it. And if you watch the videos, even when they aren't doing like three point turns, etc., and they just, they're just taking their sweet time doing this, it's still possible to exceed two minutes. Two minutes is actually not a lot of time for you to do this parking maneuver, put it into e-brake, and then get out safely without hitting the turn. So it's it, that's why this particular T parking is super hard. As an experienced driver, this was my initial thought, all right? This was what I was originally gonna do. This is what I usually do in America. I would just slightly go over the center, make sure I clear, I go in, then I would probably line up onto the right hand side where I have a huge space there and then I would turn and go in. And then I would stick to the left hand side so I have a clearance there and then I would go. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> now, if you do it that way, you're most likely going to fail and there's a special technique to do this because this lane is significantly smaller than anything you'll encounter in America. So I want to remind you at this point again there is a link below to a video of this Korean guy. He's a driving instructor telling you exactly how to do this T intersection. Super helpful. I'm basically translating what he says into English. So take a look at it afterwards and it'll make sense what he's telling you. This particular edge right here, not the line, but the curb, the black and yellow curb. You want to proceed with the car stuck to the left hand side until your shoulders are lined up with the black and red yellow curve from there from here actually i saw a couple different devices it's anywhere from a half handle turn to a full one turn so when you have your handle turn it either halfway 180 degrees or full 360. I don't think it matters too much, honestly. But um, turn it one to half and proceed to make a turn like this. This is when you are going to confirm that your rear view mirror on your left hand side is going to touch the edge of the curb. Now, what I remember when I was actually taking the test, I confirmed that actually the corner was touching this curb when I was looking at it <clears throat> and I was uncomfortably close to this corner here where I was thinking I might be going over the line you know but when I was doing this I I still wasn't in far enough so I ended up hitting this line now I didn't hit it because I had the rear view mirror on looking at the at the corner so I did a three point adjustment but I'm just telling you be very mindful that you have to the the position you want to be in is have this car as close to the corner as you can it's to a point where you're almost hitting the line with your front tires and then you would be making this turn okay so once you confirm that the mirror is at least to this corner here, if not, maybe even slightly further, but just enough that your front wheels aren't touching, you want to turn the handle to the left hand side so that you are doing this maneuver here. What you want to be mindful of is your left hand rear view mirror that you aren't going over this line with your rear tires. You theoretically shouldn't, 
although you're very close to here because your your tires are literally almost lined up to this point but you know just just be mindful that you're clearing that with your rear tires and it's gonna become very uncomfortably close right here like your tires are just gonna barely make it within the the limit now the reason why you don't want to do this and then turn in 45 degrees is because it's a front wheel drive if you go up to the right hand like this and then you turn it to the left 45 degrees your front of the car is gonna do this maneuver here and you'll most likely hit the line and that's why the, that's the reason why they recommend and the only way i see this being done is going up here shoulder uh, level with the curb doing a half to a one full circle turn on the steering wheel to the right and then stopping left all the way lock the steering wheel and then going in now once you clear once you see that this rear wheel has cleared here the next thing you want to confirm is on the right rear view mirror that your right hand rear wheel is clearing this curb this is when i first you know realized in my test oh my gosh i'm gonna hit it because i didn't go far enough uh, don't panic too much just stop you know and then as an experienced driver you should know how to do a three point just go slightly forward i mean you're gonna be very uncomfortably close to here but there's gonna be just enough space for you to pull a little bit more and then go back okay now here is an instant fail criteria that you must be mindful of. If you do not pass the line here, there is a line right here for your rear wheels to pass. If you don't pass it, instant fail, all right? So once you straighten out your steering wheel, you're gonna look at the rear view mirror and confirm that the rear wheel has passed this. But this is actually easier than it sounds if you know the secret. The secret is, is once you pass it, you are going to, again, hear the friendly beep. Once you hear that beep because you've confirmed passing it, then you will press the brakes and pull up the e-brake. This is the only time in the whole course, aside from when you do the final stop, you will be putting up the e-brake. If you don't pull up the e-brake, it's a negative 10 point deduction. So once you cross that line, you hear the beep, stop, pull up the e-brake, and then again, wait for another beep to confirm that it's confirmed you pulling up the e-brake. Once that's happened, remember, you know, it's if you drive with your e-brake, it's also another instant fail. Drop that e-brake and then proceed straight, okay? And then like the same concept here, making that tight turn, when you see either the front of the door handle up on this line or your shoulder up around this curb, you will make, you will stop, turn the handle all the way to the right so you can make a tight turn without hitting the lines. So knowing that you have to do that after you do this and you're backing in what i try to do was try to get my car as close to the left hand corner before when, when i was backing in that way i have clearance to make that right hand turn i mean this is common sense but you know, you know i'm just going over it in detail for everybody once you're out here um same thing make sure you know, you confirm everything, stop, make a tight turn. But from what I remember, they, they had like a little circled off area here. So it was a lot easier for me to get out here. And I and I was by this time very familiar with uh, the clearances of my car. So I was feeling very comfortable doing the turns. But for those of you who aren't as experienced of a driver, you know, just use that stop and then confirm and then do that tight turn kind of thing around here. All right. Now you've gotten the hardest part of this course done, 
but you literally have to be on alert at all times because there is an emergency stop task. It could happen anywhere, anywhere in this course. You will see a little, you know, ambulance type of red and green light in front of you that could turn on signaling an emergency and you have to stop within two seconds. If you don't, it's a 10 point deduction. But what I've been noticing is most of the emergency stops, they happen somewhere around here. Okay. And also for that reason, when you have a choice, even the test instructors were telling you not to go into T1. Because this is an area where a lot of um, test takers end up stopping for some reason. And it's most likely because they're doing the emergency test stop. And that's also where I did emergency test stop as soon as I exited. So when they're stopped there, you might be exceeding your two minute time zone. So they said all of these are pretty much the same except one is disadvantageous. So this guy here actually will be trying to uh, tell you to go to different areas. That's not one. But, you know, if all of these are filled up because somebody's taking just too long, you might be unlucky and get number one. So if you can, try not to go to number one. That's, that's what they were telling us. And when they do their emergency stop, this is the thing you have to be mindful of. Two seconds is actually not a lot of time. And when you see, like, these videos of people um, trying this course out, they get this 10-point deduction quite often because they're afraid to slam on the brakes. Now, in the road test, that's definitely not an action you want to do because that's, that's a point failure. But here in this particular course, you know, I, you, I was driving basically 10, 15 kilometers per hour. So it's quite slow. Whenever you see the emergency stop, slam on the brake, guys. That's the only way you're going to get this two second stop. And then after the stop, you have three seconds. So some people are worried, oh, I got to do two things at once, slam on the brakes and turn on the hazards. After you stop, you have three seconds. So it's like a total of five seconds for you to turn on the hazards. Plenty of time. Just slam on the brake, make sure you stop and then turn on the hazards. OK, so just be mindful of that. That usually happens here. But when you're observing, you know, that's another thing you should be um, observing the cars to see where they're usually doing the emergency stops. I, I saw them mostly do it here. Uh, but it could technically happen anywhere on the course, okay? The next thing is the second intersection. This is probably the easiest task. Um, just gonna go around and make sure you go through this intersection when it's green. And because the way they timed it, the green light here is a lot longer than when you're going through here. Um, just be mindful that this is where you have to do a turn signal. If you go through here without turn signal, you're gonna end up getting a five point deduction. And then as soon as you cross through or hear that friendly beep, turn off the turn signal, okay? So, you know, as far as stop end, that's the only time you have to think about the turn signal. This is, this is the only other place, okay? So focus your head on every other task because there's so many things you have to remember at this point. Um, just turn on your turn signal headlight, uh, you know, <laughs> turn signal brain right at this point only, okay? Uh, other than that, don't worry about the turn signal. And then once you proceed through here, you get to the speed zone. Now, the speed zone is actually a lot trickier than it may seem because I saw a couple people fail it on the um, YouTube videos. And the reason for that is, is actually, they do a good job of explaining it to you here, but it's all in Korean, so I've done it in English. You'll see the 20 kilometer uh, sign right up there, you see? Now, within these two points, you're supposed to go above 20 kilometers and drop back down to less than 20 kilometers. So you have to exceed 20 kilometers and then drop back down in between these signs. But it's not actually the sign they are basing it on 10 meters ahead of the sign and your front wheel has to pass it. So 
if you know the secret, uh, if you know this, it's a lot easier than it sounds because the distance here, this isn't to scale. The distance between the two, the two signs, it's quite, it's quite huge. I mean, it, it's like a long stretch. It's plenty of time for you to exceed 20 kilometers. You don't have to go like 30 or 40. I went, I, I hit about 25 kilometers and then I, I dropped back down. And um, what I would recommend that you do is as you're passing through here, accelerate because I was going 10 to 15 kilometers, accelerate to about 19 kilometers. And then when you're safely past like the 10 meter mark, you think you're sort of like a third of the way through, then accelerate up to about 25. And then as soon as you hit that 25, drop it. Now you have all the way up to 10 meters past the 20 kilometer sign, but I, I dropped it before I even hit that just to be on the safe side. And I passed. I know I passed because the second time I did this test, I asked and I got 100%. So it's not like I don't know what I didn't get it wrong on. I, I know I got everything right and that's the way I did it. So it, it should work out. You have plenty of time for you to exceed and then drop. And then, you know, there's a lot of points you can get off here too. So still be on your guard. Make sure you turn that turn signal on to the right. And then you stop. Then you put the gear into park. Then you put up the e-brake and then you turn off the engine. This part, they actually announce it on the GPS. So just do as the GPS says. Um, you might just be so eager like, oh, I passed. So then, you know... You just go back into your natural instincts. And because I used to drive a manual, um, my instincts are basically to um, stop and put the e-brake up at the same time. And then I would put into park and then turn the engine off. So just take your time. Just stop. Do what the GPS says. Put the gear into park. Then put the e-brake on. And then turn the engine off. Now, the reason I put a star here is I clearly remember... Um, when I did the stop over here, because there's other people that need to go, um, the instructor was like telling me to get out, get out. You know, he was rushing me like most of Korea, they're always rushing you. So, um, I remember I got out with the engine still on. Um, but, and, and then I was like, oh shit. And then I was like, I went back and I'm like, I didn't turn the engine off. Is that okay? And then he said, it's fine. But just be on the safe side and turn it off. Um, you know, I know it was fine because I got 100%. But yeah, that's why I put a little star there. Anyways, I know there's a lot of information that I just went over. I know you'll most likely be nervous now that I told you all this as I was. But um, just take your time and you'll, you'll do fine. I mean, the first time I failed just on the equipment check. Second time I went, I, I, I got 100%. So... It, as an experienced driver, as long as you know all these tips, you should be able to pass. Um, don't be too nervous because when you're nervous, that's when you'll start panicking and turning on equipment and stuff that you're not supposed to. Uh, but definitely watch the other videos that I told you with the Korean driving instructors going through a replica of it. And then you visualizing how you're going to do that. Once you do that and, and you're very familiar with the voices and the beeps and all of that, you're going to be less nervous and more likely to pass. <clears throat> now, another thing uh, I want to quickly mention, too, is even though I visualize everything, there was clearly a moment when I was doing the T intersection. Um, you're there for quite a bit of time and you're always alert for what the instructors are saying and such. You'll hear loudspeakers and them talking in Korean, saying, you know, get out of the car, or blah, 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 to other people who are failing. Um, that makes you, like, nervous. Like, oh, did I do something wrong? Like, I, I remember clearly thinking that. You, you know, don't worry too much about what they're saying in the loudspeakers. If you are clearly an English speaker, they are going to, like, come at you and then speak to you in English and such. Um, just... Dedicate all of your brain and focus into not passing or hitting those lines. And on that point, 
Unlike the rest of the course where you get a 15 point deduction every time you cross the line, at the T intersection, you get negative 10 points for every three seconds you cross the line. Now, why this is critical is when you're doing this, you can screw yourself and get yourself in a situation where you're in the line. And you might stop and then try to adjust or whatever. Three seconds isn't a lot of time. So when you hit the line, there's a good chance you can just get a negative 20 point deduction. So very critical, you don't hit the line. And when you do hit the line, just drive through it, you know? Like you hit the line with your rear view, you hear like beep, negative 10 point deduction for um, hitting the line. Don't like panic and stop. Just since you already hit it, drive through it, okay? And just and if you hit the rear, just make sure you clear the front. If you hit the front, just drive through it and make sure you adjust and clear the back. If you stop there, then you're just gonna get another 10 point deduction. Lastly, the thing I had a question about as well was um, if you read the Reddit forums and such, uh, there's like a lot of misinformation out there. And um, it, it wasn't very clear to me whether or not I had to put my gear on park every time I stopped. That's a huge misinformation out there, guys. When you're doing the road course, yes. For any stops over, I believe, 10 seconds, I'll go over this in more detail for, on my third video, you have to put your gear in neutral, not park. But in the driving technical course, there is not a single point where you're required to put the gear in park, certainly not park, or neutral when you're stopping. Um, just... I would, what I would do is compartmentalize the different tests and the information you take from this course test, just apply it to the course test. And then watch, you know, my previous video on the other stuff or my third coming part three video on the road test with all the tips about passing the road test because a whole set of rules and techniques and stupid little things you have to remember apply to the road test. Hopefully this instructional video was helpful to you. Um, I went very OCD because I'm quite OCD and this is everything that I was like trying to remember and um, conceptualize while I was taking the test. Uh, <laughs> maybe not all of you are going to be thinking like me, but it's good to at least hear it once. So, you know, in English, um, everything that the Koreans would know in Korean before they take the test. Don't feel bad if you fail it. Trust me, it's a hard test. Even Koreans with all the plethora of YouTube videos, instructional videos, and then even the driving courses, they fail it. It's it's one of the hardest tests in the world as far as the pass rate is concerned. Um, so if you pass it, kudos to you. If you don't, don't worry, just take it another time and you'll do much better. So fighting to you and I hope you pass that test and I hope to see you in the next video for the tips and advice on the road course. Still a bit nervous because I failed it the first time but I feel definitely better prepared because I decided to just screw all the websites that advise foreigners on how to get the driver's licenses and I was actually watching the Korean ones and it clarified a lot of things. Passed it! Not sure if I can take the road test today because theoretically I should be practicing, but I'm gonna try to see if I can take the test today. While waiting, I even noticed that they have these handouts for the course so you can look at it in advance. And uh, this would be the road test. Looks like they have four different courses. So ironically, they don't have any time slots here until next Monday. So I'll be going to Gangnam again for the road test at 2.30. Good news is, is that I can still take it today. Um, they still make you pay 4,000 for the temporary driver's license, although you're not really going to use it. And then it's another 25,000 for the road test. But now my theory of the Sobu driver's license testing area being less crowded sort of goes out the window. I'm not really sure what to say. Because for the road test, they are all booked out until 
next week, which is longer than how it was in Gangnam.